we've got some new training that's coming up. So if you want to be part of that, hit the link below and I will send you the details. All right, so let's talk about this fake housing crisis that's never going to come. I was in the market and I was looking at million dollar plus properties. I would see a million dollar house or a two million dollar house come on the market Sunday and be under contract by Friday. Consistently saw this. Had the conversation with my real estate agent, had a conversation with another real estate agent. A lot of people are paying cash for these houses. So they're not worried about the interest rate. And then the people who are not paying cash for these houses are well financed. They make a lot of money. They have money to put down. They have good credit. They're, they're, they're just going out and they're moving. So why are all of these YouTubers talking about the coming housing crash that they've been talking about since 2020, 2021, 2022, now it's in 2023. They keep saying it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. This housing crash. Now, let's go ahead and talk about how data is manipulated. First of all, there are parts of the country where housing prices have not gotten to the point where the average person cannot afford to buy a house. And there are places that got extremely hot, such as Miami, such as uh, places in Texas. And what you will see is people will matriculate the data and they will like the housing crash is coming. The house crash is coming. Let me explain to you why the housing crash is not coming no time soon. First of all, the number of people who have mortgages in the two and three percent range are a lot. And these folks have a lot of equity in their house. And a lot of these folks do not want to be entering into the marketplace where they got to pay more for the house and they're going to have a high mortgage interest rate. So they're just sitting. It's like if they have no reason, if they have no reason to sell, they have no reason to move, they're sitting. And these people will continue to sit because mark my words, interest rates are going to go up. They're not going to come down. They're going to go up. And with this large consistency of people who are just sitting, the market's not moving. So let's go ahead and I should draw like I, I, I really should have a graph here, but I want you to think of cycles. Um, the properties I was looking at were one to two million dollars and these houses were being snapped up, snapped up. So let's go ahead and have a, a conversation. Who's going to buy a one to two million dollar house? This is going to be less than 10 percent of the country, less, less than 10 percent of the country. So with that in mind, the upper marketplace, the less 10 percent of the country is driving this real estate market because they have number one, they have good credit, they have cash. And in a lot of cases, these home, these home seeking buyers have cash to pay for their house. Now, let me explain to you why there's not going to be a real estate crash. Once again, the people with the low interest rates, a lot of equity in their houses, and they have no reason to move. They don't want to get in this market because the market's crazy. So what is happening is. And I keep seeing that the interest rates are going to come down. The interest rates are not coming down in 2023. They're not. Um, once the interest rates do come down, guess what's going to happen? There's a bunch of people who are on the side of the market who have been effectively priced out the market. These people have good credit. They have money to put down. But at the moment, they're effectively part priced out the market because of the interest rates. So once these interest rates come down, these people are going to be able to get into the market rate, which is going to push the price of houses up. It's not coming down. So let's talk about who are these people who want the housing market to crash? Let's go back to the broke, no money crowd. These are people who want the housing market to crash. Remember, I was talking to, to you about if you're rich and successful in the United States of America, you will be hated. This is one of the reasons, because 
if you're rich and successful, you could buy a house in this market. And there's a lot of people like 70 percent of the country at the moment cannot buy a house in the current market unless they live in a location that no one wants to go to where housing prices have remained affordable. And this is something else. The affordability crisis, the affordability crisis. Um, one of the things I know about business is markets will self-correct. So one of the things that's going to happen is the market is going to adjust to this. And this is something I want you to understand. And we're going to use Boston, Massachusetts. Housing prices in Boston, Massachusetts have been extremely high for decades. Couples would get married and move into their parents' house and save money because that's the only way that they can get a house in Boston, Massachusetts. Fact check me. Go ahead and look at the housing prices in Boston, Massachusetts. They've been ridiculously high for a long, long, long time. And what did the people in Boston, Massachusetts do? They adjusted. So I know there's a lot of people who's like, I can't buy. No one can buy in this market. The people who want to buy will adjust. They will do the things that they need to do. Uh, I'll give you an example. And this is something I learned when I worked at Renocrate. Uh, Renocrate was founded in um, Wharton, Massachusetts. I, I forget the city. And I was talking to someone who lived in Boston and she was at one of our meetups and she's talking about what she and her husband did. She worked. Her husband worked. They moved in to um, his parents house. They completely saved her whole salary for not one, not two, but three years. This was in the 80s. Three years, 80s, early 90s, to buy a house in Boston, Massachusetts. So the people who want to buy a house will adapt. They will do the things that they need to do so they can buy a house. Now, you know, we, we, we keep hearing uh, affordability crisis, affordability crisis, where the average person cannot afford a house. And right now there is uh, legislation in Congress to raise the minimum wage. OK, they can raise the minimum wage. So let me go ahead and explain to you why that's going to get really, really dicey and why this is going to bring on automation like you wouldn't believe. There are many businesses that are not in a position to raise the minimum wage. They cannot raise the minimum wage. So what's going to happen is they're going to automate like <clears throat> and you're starting to see it. Remember, when's the first time you went to McDonald's and there was a kiosk? It was the first time I went to Taco Bell. I had a craving for some tacos and, and Taco Bell. They have a kiosk and it's like, please use the kiosk. Please use the kiosk. And this is the first sign of automation because you using the kiosk, they don't have to have someone sitting at the cash register waiting for people to come in. And as we get into it and get into it, Automation is going to be more and more pervasive. So what's going to happen is if you have the skill sets for a low wage job, these jobs are going to start disappearing because they're going to use automation to replace you. Because, number one, let's go ahead and talk about it. a lot of people don't want to do these low wage jobs. They're boring. They're not interesting. I get that. So what they're going to do is create a high level of automation. You have not even seen the level of automation that's coming out. The level of automation is going to be mind blowing. So with the increase in the minimum wage, with the level of automation, we're going to see a shift in society. And once again, uh, the affordability crisis, the people with bad credit, no money, no down payments. Guess what? You will be renting forever. You'll be renting your whole life. You will never buy a house. This will be facts because number one, interest rates are going up. Number two, the price of houses are going up. Number three, and this is one of the things, because anyone who's in the housing market, like I was, 
would know that this whole housing crash um, videos were complete and other crap. Because I'm just sitting there like, wait a minute, housing crash, housing crash, housing crash. Now, I do believe there will be a housing correction. I do believe because one of the things I did see is after the kids were back to school, I saw a lot of properties have price decreases, but they didn't have. I mean, all right, let's go ahead and talk about this. You had a house that was worth two hundred and fifty thousand dollars in 1990 in 2019. And due to the price increases, this house now went up to 440. It was 220 in 2019. Now, in 2023, this same house is 440. So now this house has appreciated $220,000, right? Now, they knocked the price off 20000 So now instead of the house being like 440, let's say they knocked 40 off. So now the house is worth 400000 but in, in, in 2019, it was worth 220. So even with the knocking off of price, these houses are still way more expensive than they used to be. So even with pricing concessions and stuff, you're still going to have houses at a very high level. Now, one of the things that's going to happen is this is going to go on for years. Now, I know we're looking at a recession. I'm going to tell you the affordability crisis is just going to get worse during the recession and interest rates are going to go up the rest of 2023 and housing prices are going to go up in 2024. There will not be this crash because there all these people want this crash. They want the, the real estate to crash so they can get it. But here's the thing. You folks who are sitting back waiting on a real estate crash want the economy to do bad because this is what will happen for us to have a true crash. The, la the last real estate crash we had was came because we had a whole bunch of foreclosures with a lot of people who were getting loans. I can tell you from personal experience, you know, if you don't have two years tax returns on record, you're not going to be able to get an FHA loan. You're not going to be able to get a conventional loan. You're not going to be able to get a VA loan. So the mortgage process has become much more rigorous. So, yes, you know, we will have some people will have foreclosures, but it will be nothing close to what happened in 20 in 20, 2008, 9, 10, 11 and 12. Their last real estate crash that we had came because we had a lot of unstable real estate deals. That's why we had that crash. We don't have that. Now, one of the things that I have seen with my own two eyeballs is people will do what they want to do. I was talking to this real estate agent. I went to an open house and she said her last uh, two buyers were cash buyers. So once again, this this top of the market is driving a lot of stuff because you have cash buyers from multi million dollar houses. And then you have people who are coming. They're not coming with 20 percent down on, like, say, a seven hundred thousand dollar house. They're coming with two hundred. They're coming with three hundred thousand. They're coming with four hundred thousand down on these houses, which, yes, the interest rate is high, but they're putting so much down that their mortgage payment ain't that much. So once again, the upper echelon of the economy is literally driving this real estate market. They're driving it with both hands on the wheel and they're going to drive this market for the next two to four years and in two to four years in the future. We will start to see some better corrections. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. What you got to do as a person in America who wants to be able to afford real estate, you got to make more money. That's it, because once again, like these people in Boston, please research me on this. Boston's been like this for decades. It has been a very expensive real estate market and people had to make adjustments and concessions so they could afford to buy a house in Boston. So this is what the rest of the country is going to do because people are not going to stop buying houses because this is like people are not going to stop getting married. People are not going to stop having kids. People are not going to have they're, they're going to have a more a bigger need for more space. And this is one of the things, because 
I see a lot of people who want the real estate market to crash. They want the price of eggs to go down. They want all of this other stuff to go down, right? And I, I, I got to say it, and this is going to be a future America, the two Americas. Because, once again, in my opinion, it's a personal choice which America you want to live in. You could live in the great America or you can live in the hands down America. It's a choice. And it's about choice on whether you go out and get yourself a good education and you prep yourself to where you can exist in the new America. The new America, the new America is here. This is people who are not making TikTok videos about the price of eggs. These are people who are going out and buying these 700 to $5 million homes. They're living their best life. They're getting married. They're having kids and they're living life in these United States of America. So or if you're in that second America where the price of dog food is scaring you. You were there before the recession. You were there before the pandemic. And more than likely, you will be there until the day that you die. Pretty much. That's pretty much where you're going to be. So for the people who want to graduate, because like I said, now I understand why a lot of YouTube content creators are saying the real estate market is going to crash. They're making millions of dollars saying the real estate market is going to crash millions because there's a rabid audience that wants to hear that information because there are people praying. Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, can you reduce the price of real estate? Can you make it crash so I can afford to buy a piece of real estate? There are people praying for a crash so they can get in versus doing the things that they need to do so they can up their income and up their productivity in America. But there there will be no real estate crash. There won't as someone who's who was in the real estate market. There will not be a real estate crash. It ain't happening. It's just not happening. 